We have many famous names and personalities in the history who have been forgotten after they died. But there are some people who made headlines after their death and they were in the headlines for several months, years and even today. One of these names is Osama bin Laden. In today's video, we will try to learn who Osama bin Laden actually was. Why was he killed and then thrown into the sea? Was he really created by the CIA and United Nations? And why did he declare war against America? Well, we all have a slight idea. But before we delve into the video and start answering all those questions, do not forget to like this video and hit the subscribe button as hard as those playing hit the Born on March 10, 1957 in Riyadh, the capital of Saudi Arabia. Bin Laden's family was one of the most famous and rich families of Saudi. His full name was Osama bin Muhammad bin Awad bin Laden. Osama bin Laden's father was a self-made billionaire who moved to Saudi Arabia from Yemen as a laborer. And he directly rose to major construction firms for Saudi royal family. By the time of his death in a plane crash in 1967, his company had become one of the largest construction firms in the Middle East. And by that time, the Bin Laden family had developed a very close relationship with the Saudi royal family. His father was one of the closest friends of Shah Faisal, the king of Saudi Arabia at that time. If you are a Muslim, you might know about Imam Mahdi. If not, I am here to tell you. You see, in Islam, we believe in a future leader called Imam Mahdi al-Islam, which is believed to come to this world to bring peace and harmony. It is like a concept of Messiah in other religions. Bin Laden's father was a pure Muslim. He believed in Islam as much as he would believe in anything else. So he was working to gather funds in belief that one day in his lifetime, Imam Mahdi will come and he will hand over the fund to him to help him. He collected more than $1 million, which would be $8 million in today's time due to inflation. In one interview, Osama bin Laden said that Shah Faisal only cried for two people. One was the Prime Minister of Pakistan, Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, and the second was his father, Muhammad bin Laden. Osama bin Laden got his early education from Saudi Arabia, and then later on he did his MBA from Abdul Aziz University. Some people believe that he got a degree in engineering from London. It is believed that Osama bin Laden lived his youth as, as like a Saudi prince, but as much as he got exposed to the outer world, his personality started to change. The time he spent at the university was the key to his future role as Al-Qaeda leader. And now the time comes where Osama bin Laden's life was going to change. A 22-year-old Osama was sitting somewhere in Saudi Arabia when he heard the news of Soviet Union invading Afghanistan. Bin Laden, who viewed this invasion as an act of aggression against Islam, started to travel to Afghanistan to meet the resistance leader. And shortly after that, he started raising funds to help out this resistance as much as he can. By 1984, his activities were mainly centered in Afghanistan and Pakistan. As soon as the time went by, he started recruiting more volunteers from Saudi Arabia and different Arab countries to fight against the Soviet Union. Now comes the second turning point in his life. The president of Egypt, Husni Mubarak, started and cracked down operation against Al-Jihad and went full in. Most of the members of Al-Jihad started running and seeking refugees in different countries. And a lot of them came in Afghanistan and with them came Ayman al-Zawari, one of the masterminds of Al-Jihad. He came and joined hand with Osama bin Laden. The people from Afghanistan used to think that the ones from Arab countries are really weak and they were really considered that they have to put their own lives on the line to save them. Well, in simple terms, during the war of Soviet Union Afghanistan, the people of Afghanistan used to think of this organization nothing more than a joke. Well, now things were starting to change after the Egyptians started to join this organization. And by Egyptians, I mean Al-Jihad. Especially by the involvement of Ayman al-Zawari. You see, Ayman was so smart that he brainwashed Osama and made them kill their former leader and took entire control over this organization. Well, Ayman knew that Osama was the only person in this organization who could collect that much funds. And where were these funds coming from? Now is this is the real deal. And if I stop posting after this video, you will know why. Okay, now let's talk through this clearly without any complicated words and theories. 
Well, we all know that America and Soviet Union became enemies after World War II and especially after Cold War of 1947. When Soviet Union attacked Afghanistan, they were looking really powerful and America got afraid and but if somehow Soviet Union wins this war and take control over Afghanistan, they would have much more power, which would cause America a real problem in the near future. But not only America, the neighboring countries of Afghanistan Iran and Pakistan were afraid too that if the Soviet Union wins this war they wouldn't stop they would come for Pakistan and Iran so both of these countries helped as much as they can with power with money with moral support Pakistan even opened its border for the Afghan refugees and with this came 7 million Afghanis to Pakistan and with the 7 million also came a lot of terrorism which really left Pakistan in the near future with these 7 million came less job opportunities, less food and everything. The crime rate of Pakistan before 1979 was 5 times less than which it is now today or it's, it was when the Afghan refugees came here. I'm not blaming those Afghan people. I have lived with them. I have seen them live in Pakistan. I have seen them collect garbage to sell to make a living. But there were a lot of people which had to do horrible things just to survive. As I was saying that America was scared. And what happens when you are scared? You do stupid things. Well, America implanted a virus in Afghanistan to fight against their enemy, Soviet Union, which was going to come after them. Well, after fighting for 10 years, from 1979 to 1989, Soviet Union somehow felt its defeat and left Afghanistan. And what happens when you put a 22-year-old boy in war for 10 complete years and fund him completely and support him and back him to fight for its religion? And when the boy realizes that he was used, what he would do with these 10 years of experience? America did not even realize that. A leading US expert from South Asia said here that I warned them that they are creating a monster. Selig Harrison from Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars said here, and I am reading, that the CIA made a historic mistake in encouraging Islamic groups from all over the world to come to Afghanistan. The US provided $3 billion for building up these groups. So they encouraged youngsters from the Muslim countries all over the world to join this war and named it Jihad, which in simple words means a fight for religion. And later on, they named these groups that they created for their own profit terrorists and we all know that who is the biggest terrorist in on planet earth after soviet union left afghanistan bin laden came back to saudi arabia and was welcomed as a hero but later on saudi government started to worry about him as him being too extreme in 1990 in the gulf war Bin Laden offered its help to protect Saudi Arabia, but the government refused and instead relied on the forces of the United States. Bin Laden got really mad and in 1991, he left Saudi Arabia and went to Sudan. In the early 1990s, Bin Laden and his group Al-Qaeda saw that USA is trying to take control over the Muslim world and they tried to warn it. And in return, USA declared Bin Laden a terrorist. Pissed by this, he started praising attacks on America, like the 1993 World Trade Center bombing. You have declared a jihad against the United States. Can you tell us why? The U.S. government has committed acts that are extremely unjust, hideous and criminal through its support of the Israeli occupation of Palestine. And we believe the U.S. is directly responsible for those killed in Palestine, Lebanon and Iraq. In 1994, Saudi Arabia, being a puppet to the United States, expelled the citizenship of bin Laden and stopped his fund. And in 1996, due to the heavy international pressure, and by international I mean the United States pressure, Sudan also expelled bin Laden. And then he went back to Saudi Arabia where he was given protection by the ruling Taliban militia. Bin Laden saw that the United States is trying to steal away the natural resources from the Islamic countries. Being in control with the Arabian Peninsula, in, including the important Islamic sites and the government that were too friendly with the United States. 
Now his main aim seemed to be getting USA involved in a war with the Muslim countries. He thought that by getting United States involved in a war with the Muslim world, it could lead to a new world order where there is only one Islamic state. Later that year, he declared war against the United States. In 2001, after the attack of 9-11, USA led a group of forces that removed the Taliban from the power of Afghanistan. And in 2001, the United Forces almost captured Bin Laden in the Tora Bora Caves. The US forces looked for him along Pakistan and Afghanistan border for several years, but he stayed out of public eye. But in 2004, in October, just before the presidential elections in the United States, he released a video admitting that he planned the September 11 attack. After that, he released audio messages now and then, like the 2008 audio message where he threatened the Israelis for Palestinian deaths, or like in 2009, where he challenged the new US President Barack Obama to continue the war against Al Qaeda. While the US forces continued the search for Bin Laden, he was believed to be hiding in Afghanistan or the tribal areas of Pakistan near Afghan border. Eventually, the US intelligence found him in Pakistan, living in a secure compound in a city called Aptabad near the city of Islamabad. After contacting the Pakistani government, what they say in the American language, they jumped him. On May 2, 2011, a small US force transported by helicopters invaded the compound which resulted in the death of Osama bin Laden. After that, the death body of Osama was taken by the US forces for several examination and DNA identification and followed by sea burial. Well, some say that the dead body of Osama is buried somewhere on an island. And now the question is, why was his dead body thrown into the sea? Well, as you see, he was a widely known terrorist. He committed several crimes and no one in the Muslim country wanted to take his dead body and bury him in their land. So as per the Islamic law that they have to bury the dead body in 24 hours, they had no other option but to throw his dead body in the sea. President Barack Obama confirmed Bin Laden's death on TV. Good evening. Good evening. Tonight, I can report to the American people and to the world. The United States has conducted an operation that killed Osama bin Laden, the leader of Al-Qaeda. After this announcement, Al-Qaeda released a, released a note which stated that they are going to avenge the death of Osama bin Laden and which confirmed that he is dead. Well, as there are several rumors that he was not killed and the whole thing was staged and he is still alive, well, nobody from us can tell that. And if you can, please comment that. And with this, our video has come to an end. And I would like to thank you very much if you have stick with me till the very end. And if you have, please let me know in the comment section. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. See you in the next video.